Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> the sunshine fills us with joy, amen? Blessed of the Lord and even in music. Yes. So, I understand that we have a special music coming up here. And so before I get started, I think we shall worship the Lord in song. Many ways to worship the Lord, amen? amen. And music is a powerful way that God has created to connect with us. So, may the Lord bless. song. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Beautiful song, yes. Thank you, Ruth. Let's bow our heads before we start. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to worship you today, to bow before you, to recognize you as our Savior and our King, the one from whom all blessings flow, every heartbeat, every breath, Lord, and so much more you want to bestow upon us. As we just contemplated in that special music, the question of are we ready for Jesus to come? Lord, I know that the goal of your heart is that all your people will be ready. And so, Father, I just pray, take my words today. May it be touched by your Holy Spirit to help encourage us to find the way to be that ready. By your power and your honor and your glory, Father, bless us, we ask in thy name. Amen. To the head of the Department of War, it was known as X. To the Joint Chiefs of Staff, it was known as S1. To personnel working on the project, it was known as SY. It was a secret that precious few knew about. To the scientists, it was known as the gadget. Thin man and fat boy. You may recognize those names. It's from the Manhattan Project in the 1940s. The atomic program. If you jump back to August 6th, 1945, in Hiroshima, Japan, there was an 18-year-old girl who survived, and she described what this American secret was to her. Her name is Kaz Shiyushi, if I say that right. Forgive me if I didn't. She says, quote, it was a beautiful day. I had just finished breakfast, and my mother told me to go water the front yard. So I went outside, and I saw a friend in the street, and so I went out to greet her. We started talking, but then we heard a B-29. It was a sound we knew well. I had called it an angel, because it had never dropped a bomb to hurt us. Up in the sky, we saw the beautiful airplane, just like a ballerina, dancing against a blue sky. I told my friend to wave at the angel, and it turned and was gone. The only difference was this time it left a white spot up in the sky. I thought it was a parachute of an American pilot being downed into enemy territory. But then suddenly, 
there was a very, very powerful yellowish-orange flash. Like when you're taking a picture using a flash bulb, only a hundred thousand times more powerful. A secret of the power that time of the United States of America. It was a power that, yes, changed the world. We're going to talk a little bit more about it at the end. But today we're talking about another secret, right? Entitled it Jesus' Secret. Because it's a much better secret power and much greater. Because the secret power of Jesus is really no secret at all. So let's turn to our scripture today. Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. It says, But so much more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and, what? Prayed. You know, if you stay right there in Luke chapter 5, just back in verse 13, we find Jesus had just healed a leper. The news about Jesus and his power and his healing spread throughout the area. There in verse 15. And people came to hear this Jesus and to be healed by him. And then we find Jesus withdrawing to a lonely place to pray. This was Jesus' power. This was the secret, if we could say, to his power. And on your little hand out there, the very top line, it is prayer. The secret of Jesus' power was prayer. You know, there are other numerous instances where Jesus withdrew from the crowds to pray alone. You notice that? Time and time again. So I think, what can we learn from Jesus? If you turn to Matthew 14. Matthew 14. And verse 23. Matthew 14, verse 23. Okay, this is after Jesus had walked on the water. It says, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was gone, he was there alone. I gave you some cross references in Mark and John also. So here we find Jesus after feeding 5,000 people. He immediately dismissed his disciples even and the whole crowd. And he went off by himself to pray. The text in John there I gave you says that the reason he withdrew was because the people wanted to make him king by force. You know, the people were amazed by the miraculous signs that he had done and began to say, surely this is the prophet that was coming to the world, you know. John 6, 14. They recognized the power in him. They had been in this state of expectation for a long, long time, and they were hungry for liberation from their Roman oppressors. When they saw and experienced Jesus' miracle, this miraculous power, the excitement and the desire overwhelmed them. The people and disciples were not looking for a suffering, humble Savior They were looking for a conquering king. Here was Jesus' chance. He could come and destroy the Roman yoke and establish this glorious kingdom on earth that they all wanted. Undoubtedly, I believe, Satan was tempting Jesus, trying to, similar to when they met face to face in the desert, saying, well, all this I will give to you. But Jesus saw through it, didn't he? But I think, how was he able, in his humanity, to resist such a temptation? You know, he could have been powerful. 
He could have been famous. He could have been rich. He could have ruled the world. He didn't have to suffer criticism, torture, persecution, attacks, and death. He could just be everyone's hero. The Jews would have loved that. And what was his secret? Again, in Mark 6, 45 and 46, it says, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethsaida. Where there he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. It was at this crucial moment that Jesus sought to be alone with his father for added strength and to seek his father's approval, not the people's approval. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 36. We come to the garden of Gethsemane. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. It's interesting, isn't it, that he prayed apart from Peter, James, and John, and and these guys were his closest friends. So going a little further from the three disciples, Jesus sought to pour out his heart to the Father. This was not a public prayer. This was not a group prayer. For Jesus agonized in supreme agony that no human being could ever bear or even understand. This prayer was to be prayed alone. Besides, his disciples couldn't understand such a prayer. I mean, the words of Jesus to his father saying, if it be possible, take this cup from me. They couldn't understand that cup. These were intimate words. This was between Jesus and the Father. They were heartfelt words that only those two could understand. So the key thought here, number one on your handout, I'd like to suggest, is that Jesus prayed in order to keep his priorities in heavenly order. Jesus prayed in order to keep his priorities in heavenly order. So time alone spent with God helps us keep our priorities straight. Now friends, all along through here, as you see, we're speaking of Jesus praying alone and the lessons we can learn from that. But I'm not suggesting that you not have family worship, group worship, with your spouse, with your kids, whatever that may be, please do, morning, evening. But there's also a specialness in prayer alone, and Jesus is our example of that. There's a secret power in that connection with you, one-on-one, with your Heavenly Father. Luke chapter 6. I'm bouncing through a number of texts today. Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. Luke chapter 6 verse 12 says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to, what? Pray. And he continued all night in prayer to God. Interesting, isn't it, it, that the next morning was when he chose the 12 disciples. And he agonized. He prayed all night. He spent the entire night in prayer. He was about to make one of the most important choices in the entire history of time. To choose the world's first outreach team. The world's first 
organized evangelistic Christian church. Jesus was started. The prosperity and the spread of the gospel was to depend on 12, well, 11 at that time, untrained, uneducated, rough men. And you think, why did Jesus choose these particular men? Because they were better choices than the educated religious Jews. Their hearts were open. So number two, point number two on your sheet, is that Jesus prayed in order to perceive as God perceives. He prayed in order to perceive as God, the Father, perceives. So time alone spent with God helps us to see as God sees Not as man sees. We need that, amen? Amen. I'd like to turn over to 1 Samuel. Back to 1 Samuel, chapter 16. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel 16, and verse 7. This is where Saul is anointing David. But the Lord said unto Samuel, verse 7, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. Speaking of a different young man. says, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. What a reminder, amen? Jesus looks at the heart of a person. He sees what man cannot. He knows and he sees your possibilities. He sees your potential. And he sees that in every human being. Everyone. He's not the Lord of those who think they're perfect. He's not the Lord of those who think they're all powerful. He's not the Lord of those who try to be the most popular, although he is available to them too. But life shows that Jesus was the Lord, is the Lord of those who struggle. Do you ever struggle? He's the Lord of those who suffer. He's the Lord of those who feel alone. He's the Lord who, of people who make mistakes. Because he's the Lord of rejuvenation and creation. He doesn't care whether you're short or tall or fat or skinny or rich or poor. It doesn't matter. He's the Lord of everyone Amen. who will accept him as he truly is, the God of all. So please always remember, friends, Jesus does not choose those who we would consider enabled, but he will always enable those he chooses. The disciples are the best example yet. He will always enable, and just think of that group. And yet look what he did through them. Another way of saying it might be, if you will only choose to accept and obey him, he will always enable you to do whatever it is he desires of you. That may be a change of habits. That may be a change of, I don't know. That's between you and God. But he will never, ever ask you to do something that he will not give you the ability to accomplish. And we often fall short because we don't dream big enough. We don't trust him big enough. We try to wrestle with our demons alone. When he is the God over everything. And he loves you, everyone, immensely. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. 
and verse 35. We again find Jesus. He had just healed a whole bunch of folks. He had cast out demons. He had done many miracles. And here in verse 35, we find him, says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he fell asleep. No. He prayed. He prayed. How often we sometimes tend to wake up early in the morning and, hey, fall asleep <laughs> again. Yeah, we all do at times. Don't beat yourself up for it. But just remember, Jesus wants to start your day connected with him. Amen. He wants to give you that victorious life over whatever may come. And we need to do that at the start of the day. So after a Saturday night here of healing people, Jesus got up very early and the next morning, while it was still dark, he went off to pray. And we find Jesus was actually staying at Simon Peter's house. It says in verse 29, which is actually in the town of Capernaum, verse 21. It was Saturday night because they had left the synagogue to go to his home in verses 22 and 32. And here in verse 33, it states, the whole town gathered at his door after sunset. More came at night because they wanted to be healed, but they didn't want to do it on the Sabbath because they were scared of the rabbis. Desire of Ages, page 259. She says, from the homes, the shops, the marketplaces, the inhabitants of the city pressed towards the humble dwelling that sheltered Jesus. Hour after hour they came and went, for none could know whether tomorrow would find the healer still among them. Not until the last sufferer had been relieved did Jesus cease his work. It was far into the night when the multitude departed and silence settled down upon the home of Simon. The long, exciting day was past, and Jesus sought rest. Close quote, Desire of Ages 259. But then early in the morning, we find Jesus kind of snuck out of the house. I can just kind of envision him, you know, I don't know, carrying his sandals and kind of tippy-toeing out, out of the house, not wanting to wake everybody else. It was still dark, but he wanted to be alone with his father. And when the disciples finally woke up, they looked around, they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. They went looking for him because people were already gathering again outside the house. They're like, where, where did the master go? Jesus didn't want to attract attention to himself because he was a, a wonder worker or just a healer of physical problems. He was seeking to draw people to him as their savior. His answer must have disappointed him there in verse 38. He says, you know, let us go somewhere else. Let's go to the other villages. He says, I'm paraphrasing, you know, because I, I need to preach there too. He says, that's why I'm here. Not just to heal everybody. I'm here to save everybody. So the third point here this morning is Jesus prayed in order to remember and reinforce his purpose in life. He prayed to remember and reinforce, excuse me, his purpose in life. So friends, I think the time spent alone with you and the Father helps us to remember our purpose and our mission in life. Because we get up in the morning and we've all got a mental checklist. We've got things we need to get done today. We've got to do this, this, and this, and this. Okay. But we need to turn that all over to God early in the morning. Because his day list for you might be different. We want to be in the center of God's will and connected with the God of all creation. Amen. Amen. 
And time and time and time and time again, we find that's exactly what Jesus did. He went off aside to pray, to connect. The atomic age burst on the world on August 6th of 1945. The bomb was nicknamed Little Boy, equivalent of 20,000 tons of TNT. It was loaded on Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Tibbetts, B-29, that was named the Enola Gay, which was his mother. Many pilots named their aircraft after their mother, I think, to be close to them and because of the comforting uh, protection of their mother. The bombardier was Tom Ferriby, and when he re- pulled the release level and a little boy fell away Monday, August 6, 1945, it fell at 8.15 for 43 seconds. The Nola Gay and its escorts banked hard at a very precise angle that had been calculated to minimize the effect on the airplane from the expected shock wave because they couldn't get far enough away quick enough. The crew members took pictures as they prepared to flee of the most dramatic hit and run in history. But First Lieutenant Colonel Tibbetts, as he turned the B-29 around to view the ruined city, and when it came into view, the image of the devastating destruction was stunning. Co-pilot Robert Lewis said, quote, My God, what have we done? Close quote. They had no idea what they were carrying. When the bomb exploded, it completely flattened over five square miles of the city. The bomb never actually made physical contact with anything. It never even hit the ground because it was programmed to hit, uh, to, excuse me, to go off, to detonate at about 2,000 feet above ground level. In describing such, it says an air-detonated nuclear weapon produces energy roughly in the portion of 50% blast to shock waves, 35% heat, thermal radiation, 15% short long-term nuclear radiation. And the shock wave, which is a very high-pressure front, propagates outward at supersonic speeds, roughly a mile a second. The sound at sea level and room temperature, about 70 degrees, they say travels 1,129 feet a second. About a fifth of a mile, so in five seconds before the sound actually got to the first mile. Its arrival is experienced by sudden and shattering blow, followed by hurricane-forced winds. The thermal radiation generated by the nuclear explosion travels at the speed of light at 186,000 feet per second in a vacuum. And it burns all combustible material for miles around. Close quote. Oof. Power. This was the Manhattan Project fulfilled in the United States' secret power of the time, and it finally brought the Japanese government to surrender, ending World War II. And I know there's lots of this's and that's about it, but the facts say that this that actually saved hundreds of thousands of lives on both sides because it halted any need of invading the Japanese islands. Look into history yourself on that. But Jesus had what was to many a secret power. They didn't understand where it came from. But it was much bigger and much more powerful than even the physics of atomic weaponry. Because time spent alone with the Father results in power. It's power to see as God sees. It's power to make the best decisions. It's power to keep his priorities in heavenly order. To do the will of the Father. To keep the mission and the purpose of our life in front of everything we do. Just as Jesus did. And there's no power that can match that. And Jesus himself left us that example to follow. If we only will. How much time do we spend 
alone with the God of all creation. When we spend time like Jesus did, we too are guaranteed the same power. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's humbling to think of, and yet embarrassing that we don't tap into it. We don't connect with it. We struggle. We get, make excuses for behaviors and, and habits and whatever else happened in life. You know, that's human existence without God. But we have no excuse with God. Amen? Amen. And the secret to that is the power of prayer. There is nothing more blessed in gifting us than the connection to the throne room of heaven. And it comes through personal prayer. And the Holy Spirit will descend on us. Not in 43 seconds like the bomb, but at the speed of thought. And he doesn't stay 2,000 feet in the air to do his work. No, he penetrates into our inner heart and he detonates in our hearts and he changes us to do his work from within. And as the co-pilot of the Enola Gay, Robert Lewis, had said, witnessing the effects of that first bomb on the enemy, my God, what have we done? When you and I see the effects and the results that occurs when Jesus spent time alone with our Heavenly Father, we too should be moved to ask, my God, what can I do? What am I leaving undone? And we should desire to connect with the God of all, just like Jesus did. Because he wants nothing more. Friends, never forget that. He wants nothing more than to give us all the same power and the life-changing relationship that he had with Jesus. He wants it with you. And everyone hearing this. The atomic bomb's explosion resulted in a shockwave. A sudden and shattering wave traveling at supersonic speeds. Incredible winds following. The thermal radiation just burned everything within miles. And friends, as a result of spending time alone with Jesus, there's also a shock wave. Did you know that? It's a shock wave because people all around us will be shocked at the transformation in our lives. I don't understand. What happened to you? You're different. And as fruit of the time spent alone with Jesus, there's also, we could say, a thermal radiation. Because the people around us will start to feel the heat of God's love living inside you. And those all around us will be warmed by it. I wonder, hey, I want some of that. It causes them to desire it. So if if Jesus in his humanity, felt it necessary to spend time alone with the Father, how much more should we need to do it? So friends, will you join me and commit to spend more time alone with Jesus every day? More time in prayer with the Father In Jesus' name and by his grace. May God help you to realize how eternally important spending quality time alone with him is to each one of us. May he help us increase and enrich our prayer life and our connection with the Father. For there's no other power like it. May he be glorified in all of our lives. I know he wants to do it. No doubt about it. For my word tells me. Oh, Heavenly Father, how much we need prayer. We need to connect with you in ways that we are still learning about. I just ask that you would give us your Holy Spirit to impress upon each and every heart and mind and soul of the invaluable gift that that prayer is. 
And so, Lord, keep the devil away from us. Help us to see through any excuses that would take away from that time, for the devil does not want a praying, loving church, for he knows he is helpless against it. So, Lord, I pray, touch all of our hearts. Help us to set that aside. Help us to commit and carry it forth from here with the new resolution to have nothing separate us from our special private time with you where you speak to our souls. Help us not only to give our petitions and our requests to you, but also then to sit and listen for your voice. For it's in the stillness where you dwell. And Father, we rush so much in this life. We have so many concerns. Lord, we need that peace. We need that connection. And such an example is given us in the life of Jesus. And look at the power he got. And Lord, you promise that all the power from heaven is available to those who ask. So touch our hearts and grow us. Give us the victory so that one day we too, as we're just saying, from Pisgah's lofty hall, we'll grasp the eternal prize and shout as we rise in the air to meet our Redeemer and to cast our, th- our very crowns and our very lives at your feet. For you alone are worthy. Your power alone gave us victory. We praise you for that. In Jesus' most holy name we ask. Amen.